Okay, so let's talk about the landing pattern if we're going to brew today. So, because um, that's where we anticipate going. But anyway, let's talk about what is my pattern altitude at brew? Pattern altitude is 900 feet. 900 feet, right? All right, cool. What about my 90? Your 90 is 550, 450 to 550, somewhere in there. Okay, well, what is it, AGL? 450. What's my field elevation? 100. 100, right, so therefore my 90 would be at B1? 550. 550, right, okay, cool. What is going to be my groove altitude? That will be 225 to... What's the, what's the saying in the FTI, what my groove altitude is? Chapter 6. It says 100, 100 to 150 feet AGL. All right, 100 to 150 feet AGL, right? Sure. So, well, we have trees that brood today, right? So if I come in at 100 150 feet AGL, I'm going to hit them, right? So we're going to Bruton. Um, would you say we probably need to raise it up to about 200 feet AGL? Sure. So let's just say 200 plus or minus 50 AGL. So what would that be if I'm going to, you know, if for MSL? 300 to 350. Three, I would just say 300 plus or minus 50, right? Sure. Just because we got some trees on the approach in and we just don't want to hit them, right? So it's going to put us a little bit higher glide path. That's what we just need to do to stay safe. Okay, cool. All right, so I got a couple questions for you. Do you use a memory aid or anything for your transition point here? No, sir. I just I just remember what the FTI says. says right. um, What's it say? For depending on your flap setting, so no flap, takeoff flap, and landing flap. Well, imagine we're doing takeoff flap landings takeoff all day flap. long. Sure. Okay. okay. So what would that be? So we want to power from 42% to um, roughly 15%. Okay. So power, you're going to go to 15%. Anything else? Sure. What airspeed are you going to pitch for? We're going to pitch for 125. Say what? What are we find the down when it? Uh, one, 120, so we're so pitching what? for 115. So. Oh, okay, all right, just 115, I got it. All right. So, I like to say power, pitch, trim, turn, talk, right? Yes, sir. So what way am I going to trim? We want to trim nose up. Okay, I agree, right? Let's talk about why, though, right? You already said that we're coming down when flaps take off. What's our, and our power is at 42, right? Yes, sir. So let's take a look at that with the aircraft here, why you would trim nose up, okay? Let's try, here's our prop on our plane, right? Yes, sir. At 42% torque, what is that prop doing? It's throwing a lot of thrust over these wings, right? Yes, sir. Okay. As soon as I go to 15%, right, what is that going to do? Because 42 is almost 45%, right? Yes, sir. So, how much thrust then am I technically losing over my wings? You're losing almost two thirds of your thrust. About two thirds of my thrust, right? So I lost about two thirds of my thrust. So if I lose that prop wash, that lift over my wings, the plane is naturally going to what? Descend. It's going to naturally dive down, right? So exactly right. You said, hey, you're going to trim those up, and that's exactly right. All right. <clears throat> Obviously, you do your trim, you start your turn. Once you get a beam, your intended rollout point. And you're going to talk, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So we know we're at 120 here, and I'm going to slow to 115 knots here, right? Yes, sir. So basically, that's what I'm doing. I'm saying power is pulling back to 15. And so you should be trickling, hey, you know, 120, 119, 118, 117. And about 117, that's when I tell you to, hey, anticipate catching that 115, drop your nose, and then start your turn, okay? And it'll help you maintain it. Obviously, we talked about trimming those up in there. All right, cool. So for the sake of discussion today, I'm going to ask you some questions about what you need to do with your controls if you're high, low, or fast, or slow. Sure. All right. So for the sake of discussion, let's talk about a point 
kind of halfway between the 180 and the, and the 90. So what altitude do you roughly think you need to be halfway between the 180 and the 90? Somewhere between 680 and 730. Okay, well just give me a more exact 700. Sorry. 700. It's good enough for government work, right? I agree. 700 is good enough for government work. So now as you're flying around the pattern, right, you're pretty much, you kind of got this little scan pattern going here. You got your, you got your airspeed, you got your altimeter, here's your VSI, and you're looking outside, right? Yes, sir. So you're physically kind of doing this. Hey, here's my ground checkpoint, here's my airspeed, here's my altimeter, and coming back out, right? I'd agree with that too. Now, I got a question for you. Would you be interested if, um, well, first of all, you can drive your car and talk to a cell phone, right? Yes, sir. You can drive your car, talk to yourself, and shoot you gum, right? Just not on base. But you can, right? Yes, sir. Pretty easily, right? Yes, sir. You can drive your car, talk to yourself, and chew gum, and wave at your buddy. Do you agree? Yes, sir. How are you doing all that stuff? I don't know. You don't know? Well, how much brain power are you putting into driving the car? Uh, just enough to keep it on the road and safely. Very little, though, right? Yes, sir. How much brain power are you putting into flying the plane? A lot more. Oh my gosh, almost all this stuff, right? Sure. Would you be interested if I could show you how you could fly a plane with about the same amount of brain power you drive your car? Absolutely. Make it a lot easier, right? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. Well, let's talk about driving that car. Remember back the very first day you drove your car, right? Never drove before in your life, right? Yes, You're on the hand steering wheel, hands 10 and 2, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I want you to imagine the very first day you ever drove a car, you're going down the road 55 miles an hour and a deer jumps out in front of you. Very first day you ever drove. What, what would you think you would have done? I probably would have slammed on the brakes as hard as I could and froze. Maybe. That's about it. But you probably would have froze, right? Like, uh, right? Yes, sir. What about now? I mean, right now, you're front, hey, here you are, what, six, seven, eight years later, you've been driving a car, talking on the phone, chewing your gum, waving at your buddy, and a deer jumps out now. What are you going to do? Hit the brakes and swerve to avoid. Yeah. Are you thinking about what you're doing? No, sir. Absolutely not, right? You see, when you first learned to drive a car, you were doing a lot of thinking, weren't you? Yes, sir. Right? But now, when you drive, it's nothing but a reaction. Make sense? Yes, sir. So I got a, a, a question for you. What is faster, a reaction or a thought process? Reaction. Absolutely, a reaction, right? Because I'm not thinking, I'm just doing. I agree with that. You ever heard of the OODA loop? Yes, sir. What's it stand for? Um, observation. Um, TBS was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, it's. Um, here's the here's the here's the letters for you. Maybe it'll help. Uh, observe. Observe. Orient. Orient. Decide. Decide and act. Act right. Yes, sir. It's kind of a loop, right? Yes, sir. So here we are. It's doing a little loop here. So. What you're doing is you're flying around a pattern as you're observing what's going on, right? What does is there any light in the airplane that says, hey, high or fast? No, is there a light that says that? Slow, low, high, any of that? None of that, is there? No, sir. So what how does the how what does the plane tell you? It just tells you numbers, right? Yes, sir. You got your ground track outside, you got your airspeed out, your altitude. So observe means I got it, I see the numbers. Orient means, what do those numbers mean? I gotta know what they mean, right? Yes, sir. So what I'm getting ready to ask you is say, okay, I know what the numbers mean now. What am I gonna decide to do and what action am I going to take to affect the airplane to get me where I wanna be? Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. So let's talk about that real quick. We did our transition, power pitch, uh, power pitch, trim, turn, talk. Here I'm in, I'm coming in, you know, coming off the 90, uh, the 180 to the 90, and I'm hoping to be at 700 feet. Well, let's just say, instead of being at 700 feet, I'm at 800 feet, or let's say make it 600 feet. I'm at 600 feet halfway through this turn, so here I am, 600 feet, but I'm still at 115 knots. So what are you? You're low, in, uh, well, you're just low. I'm, uh, I'm low, but am I anything else? I'm at 115 knots. You're on speed. I'm on airspeed, right? Yes, sir. 
Okay. What are you going to do when your controls get back on profile at your 90? With that, I'm going to add a little bit of power and a little bit of back stick pressure. Um, okay. Kind of hold my airspeed. So you're going to add power? Yes, sir. And what are you going to do with your nose? Uh, pull it slightly up. Raise the nose, right? Yes, sir. Okay, what's that look like with your hands? And it's going to be forward with the left on the PCL and back with the right on the stick. Okay, so I do them um, at the same time or separately? Same time. Well, why would I do it separate? Why would I just add power? Because if you do that, you're going to increase your descent rate and your airspeed. Oh, so if I just add power, I'm going to increase my airspeed. Well, what if I just pull up on the nose? You're going to decrease your descent rate, but you're going to decrease your airspeed as well. Oh, okay. So if I just pull up on the nose, I'm going to get slow. But if I just uh, add power, I'm going to get fast. So i got to do them at the same time, right? Yes, sir. Cool. I agree with that. So I do that. I'm at 600 feet. 115 knots, I add power, I pull up, and now I get back to the 90 and at 550. Do I need to do anything now? You need to readjust for your normal uh, descent rate. Okay, so I need to kind of reset my stuff, right? Yes, so, sir. hey, I'm, I'm low on airspeed, add power, pull up, back on profile, reset. You agree? Yes, sir. Cool, I'd agree with that. So, what you're saying is, unless I'm Yoda and I can just wheel the plane around the pattern, I gotta physically do something with these guys? Yes, sir. I mean, I know I'm good, but I'm still not that good. I still need to use the controls, right? Yes, sir. I'd agree. All right. Well, I got a new situation for you then. Uh, I'm halfway through this turn from 180 to 90, and instead of being at 700 feet halfway through the turn, I'm at 800 feet. What are you? You're high. Anything else? 115 uh, knots, 800 feet. There. 115 knots, you're on airspeed. And you're okay. High. So I'm on airspeed and high. So how am I going to get back to the 90 at 550? Um, let's see here. You're going to um, reduce, speed high. Excuse me, reduce your power and um, lower your pitch. Lower my nose, right? Yes, sir. And again, what's that look like with your hands? It's uh, PCL on your left hand coming back and stick with your right hand going Okay, forward. so boom, nose down, get back to the 90 at 550. What do I need to do? Uh, you need to readjust back to the normal glide. That reset. All right, cool. Yeah, I agree with that too. All right, new situation here. Uh, I'm coming through halfway through the turn. I'm at 600 feet. So 600 feet here, or 600 feet here, but 125 knots. So what are you? You're low and fast. Uh, okay, I'm low and fast. What are you going to do with your controls there? You're going to pull the PCL back and um, Say what? Low and fast. I'm at 600 feet, 125 knots. What are you oh, going to do? Uh, just raise your, raise your pitch. Yeah, so I trade rate. airspeed for altitude, yes, right? Sir. And I would do that by raising my nose. You agree? Yes, sir. Cool. Hey, I do that and I get back to the 90 at 550. I would do what? You'd readjust. Just reset, right? right? Yes, sir. Cool. Here I am at 800 feet and 105 knots. So 800 feet, 105 knots. What are you? You're high and, or high and slow. Oh, okay. What am I going to do with my controls there? I'm just going to uh, pitch the nose down. Okay, sure. I'm going to drop the nose, right? Trade altitude for airspeed. Makes sense? Yes, sir. Cool. I agree with that. Now, the whole purpose for this landing pattern here is to really get you into the groove. Okay? And I consider the groove the most important checkpoint to hit, okay? So I've got a question for you, right? If I get into my groove at 300 plus or minus 50 today, right, I must therefore be what? On altitude, right? Yes, sir. I'd agree with that. i got to do my memo here. So I must be on altitude, but now i got a question for you here. Let's say I come into my groove, 300 plus or minus 50, but instead of being at 115 slow into 105, I'm at 125. So what are you? You're on altitude and fast. Ah, I'm on altitude and fast, okay. What do I need to do with my controls to try to cross that threshold at 105 knots? Um, you want to pull your PCL back. Okay, I'm going to reduce power. Anything else? You're going to um, 
think that's it. No, you just want to reduce keep power? Your, keep your uh, sight picture the same. Oh, okay. Well, what if I pulled my nose up to slow down? What would that do to my, my aim point? And then shift it down the runway. Oh, okay. Well, do I want to land down there? No. No, right? So if I'm on altitude and fast in the groove, I need to what? Pull the power back. Yeah. Nose controls aim point, power controls airspeed in the groove. you agree with that? Yes, sir. Yeah. Because if I pull my nose up, I'm going to land down here, and I can't afford to land down there, right? Because the T6 doesn't have anti-skid, T6 doesn't have beta, so I need all the pavement I can get to land this bird. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Cool. I agree with that, too. All right. So here I am. Same situation. 300 plus or minus 50 feet. I come into the groove. I should be at 100, no slower than 105 knots, and man, I'm at 100 knots. So what are you? You're on altitude and slow. I'm on altitude and slow. I agree with that. And what do you need to do with your controls then to get come across this threshold at 105? You want to uh, push the power up mm -hmm. and keep your nose um, on the on the same aim point. What what would happen if I just drop my nose to gain my airspeed? Uh, then you. Be, you'd find yourself a little crater right before the threshold. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, basically, I'm not landing on the runway, and I'm just this is a whole missing the whole point of landing an airplane, right? Yes, sir. In the grass. Okay, I agree, right? So therefore, like we said, nose controls aim point, power controls airspeed, especially in the groove. All right, in the groove there. Any questions about that? Yes, sir. Seems pretty straightforward. Yes, sir. Right. Cool. All right. I've got uh, a deal to make with you today, okay? Okay. And this is the way I fly all my patterns with every student. You're not the only one. I'm not picking on you here. Yes, sir. Right? In order for you to transition at this transition point, okay, you're going to have to be at 900 feet at Bruton, plus or minus 50 feet, okay? Yes, sir. You'll be you need to be 120 knots, plus 5, minus 0. You know, you have your landing checks complete. All right? If you are today, don't pass go, don't collect $200. We're going to just take a lap around the pattern. Now, it's not because I'm trying to be mean, but the philosophy behind it is if you can't meet these out, these, these parameters here at the transition point, then you're really not, how am I going to teach you the rest of the stuff around the pattern? Make sense? Yes, sir. Cool. So i got another question for you. You ever seen an F-18 land on the back of an aircraft carrier like this? No, sir. Never seen that, right? How about this way? No, sir. Never seen them do that? Where do you always see them come into the carrier? Straight off the back. Right off the back, which is in the groove, mm -hmm. right? Yes, sir. And what the most important checkpoint is the groove, okay? So today, if you try to angle into my runway, automatic wave off. You try to come into my runway this way, automatic wave off, okay? If you do not hit my groove today at 300 plus or minus 50 feet, you can't be any slower than the approach speed. So if you're slower than 105 for takeoff lap landings, automatic wave off, right? Because I don't, because I, A, don't want you to, we don't want to be doing all this high yaka stuff near the runway, right? That's not the way we're going to land in the real world. So we don't need to do it now. Makes sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes, sir. All right, so that's what you can anticipate as a deal for flying today. Make sense? Let's talk about one other thing that I like to do. It's a technique that will control your energy as you kind of come across the threshold. Okay? The FDI talks about you need to maintain approach speed all the way to the groove, and I totally agree with that. I like to see that speed come across to the groove. But once you come into the groove here, okay, I'd like to see you slow from about 115 and then make this a new checkpoint crossing the threshold at 105 knots. Okay? Sure. But really, if we hit the groove again at that 300 plus or minus 50 feet, MSL, right? I'm really what? I've solved for altitude, right? Sure. So, hey, I'm gonna, I mean, you're going to hear me say aim point, aim point, airspeed. Am I really worried about altitude at this point? Sure. No, right? Because it's just a glide path that I'm trying to hit, right? So as I'm coming into my runway, as you're coming into the runway, I want you to put, let's kind of clean this thing up here a little bit here. I 
I want you to put the numbers in the middle of the HUD as you're coming into the groove. Okay? Put the numbers in the middle of the HUD. Now the T6 was actually designed to be a light attack aircraft as well as a trainer. And so if the plane had bullets and it fired them, it's going to hit right in the middle of the HUD. But it's also where the plane is going to fly, right to the middle of the HUD, okay? So as you get into the groove, aim point, aim point airspeed, keep your nose at the numbers, in other words, the numbers in the middle of the HUD, until it's time to start your transition, which again in the FTI is 10 to 20, 20 feet above the ground, is where you start that leveling off, okay? And you need to cross this threshold at 105 knots. So all you're doing is aim point, aim point, airspeed. Aim point, aim point, airspeed. You simplified your scan. Make sense? Yes, sir. So 115, so here you are, you come in the groove. 115, 14, 13, 11, 10, 9, 7, 6, 5 to 105 right here. Once you come across the threshold, right, you want to level, start your level at 10 to 20 feet. But you want to level the plane to be 5 to 10 feet above the ground, okay? Let's talk about what that does, okay? And leveling your plane 5 to 10 feet above the ground. What are we having you do? You have ground effect. Yeah, let's, let's talk about that in a little bit more detail. So here's my runway. We're going to look at the glide path from the side here, right? So here's my airplane. I'm coming down on glide path. And notice that I'm aiming at the numbers, right? And I want you to imagine the RDO card's about, right here, about 500 feet down the runway. But at 10 to 20 feet, I'm going to start my level off, right? And I want to level off at 5 to 10 feet. Now, as, once you level off, what should you do with your PCL? You should be pulling it back towards idle. Ah, okay, well let's talk about that, right? We already talked about that we're going to be flying around the landing pattern at 15% torque, right? Sure. Approximately, based upon our performance, right? Well, how do I simulate a feathered prop or zero thrust torque in the airplane? Four to six percent. Four to six percent, right? So four to six percent simulates zero thrust torque. So if I level my plane and I pull my PCL back to idle then, what am I effectively doing? You're putting somewhat of an air brake in front of you. Exactly, airplane. right? I'm putting on an air brake with that big old trash can lid of a prop out in front of me, right? Okay, cool. So I'm going to ask you to do that. Start your transition to level at 10 to 20. Okay, obviously it's an eyeball thing. I'm not looking at the altimeter, right? And I'm going to level my plane at 5 to 10. Pull the PCL idle. And then the next thing you're going to hear out of my mouth is I'm going to say, keep it off, keep it off, keep the plane off the runway. Wait a minute. You tell, I pulled PCL idle. I'm telling you to get off the runway. That doesn't make sense. So what is that doing to the angle of attack of my aircraft? Pulling it up. It's raising the nose, right? Sure. What's that called? It's called the flare. Oh, it's called a flare, right? But what am I effectively doing? I'm aiming to my numbers here, leveling the plane. I pulled a PC out of idle, and now the plane is slowing down, and it's going to nice and gradually settle down right up beam the RDO cart. I want you to imagine the RDO cart is your three wire. Okay? Sure. So all we're doing is aiming to the numbers, and we're giving up some real estate as we level the plane, but I do want to land the plane here. So in order to land the plane, I've got to pull the PCL idle and keep it off. Makes sense? Yes, sir. Cool. Any questions about that? No, sir. All right, good stuff. Hey, uh, right now, go ahead and write all this stuff down. Okay?